So I know we've got a crisis when it comes to mandated overtime and the number of officers that are leaving the profession because of the, the you know, the environment, the hours, the lack of support. So as governor, MCO is going to have a partner in me, a seat at the table, and we're going to work together to address these problems, to make sure that uh, you can make a good living and enjoy the work that you do because we in the state are counting on you and you need to be at the table as decisions and changes are being made. You need to be driving those changes. So frontline staff in all of our departments, frankly, is a voice that is not heard and not respected and not a part of decision making that's happening in Lansing right now. That's going to change because what I know is that whether it is a corrections officer talking about public safety or it is a teacher talking about public education, these are critical voices that need to be driving the decision making that's happening in our state and that when they are excluded or ignored we all pay a price for it so as governor i can tell you this mco frontline workers are going to have a voice in this um, in the state as we craft the budget as we change policy in michigan So in Snyder's first budget, he started moving to privatize uh, food service in, in our corrections department. And as the Senate Democratic leader, I fought him on that because my biggest fear was when you privatize, you expose people to risk. And we've seen that play out. And obviously now the Snyder administration finally, seven years into it, has learned a lesson. I oppose privatization, especially when it comes to things that are as critical as the work that you do every single day. MCO has been a great ally to me and counsel to me because your leadership works hard and they are unparalleled. But even the best leadership in an organization can't get the job done if they don't have a governor who's going to listen to them, who respects them. And that's why as we move forward, whether it's fighting attempts to privatize or it is ensuring that you've got safe workplace and that you can make a good living doing your job, I want you to know that I'm going to be that partner. So I know that corrections officers are professionals, that public service is a calling, and that the work that you do is dangerous, it's important, and it needs to be supported. So I recognize how critical it is that you are treated as professionals, that you have the support that you need. You've got the wraparound emotional support that, that officers need to do your job well and to turn it, do that job every single day. These are the things that I, I recognize and that are priorities of mine, whether it's a budget setting or it's a debate about policy changes. You're going to have a seat at that table and you're going to be respected in a way that you haven't been in a long time. important to me as we think about what appointments to execution of, of promulgate you know rules that are already been promulgated that we've got people that really care about the job that you do not just about turf wars not just about fighting unions which is what a lot of these guys what they care about right now we've got a job to do and we got to know that there are people on that commission that recognize how hard the work is that you do every single day and why everyone in this state is relying on us to get it right. And so as we consider appointments to any sort of a commission, I want you to know that your interest is at the heart of any decision that I'm making, that your voice will be heard as decisions are made, and that we uh, will make sure that this is a state where our corrections officers are respected and protected on the job. I just want to say thank you to the corrections officers who do the work every single day, often more shifts than one in a single day. 
you're doing hard work and you deserve a governor who values what you do and who's going to fight for you. I appreciate the endorsement of MCO, but I need every single person who who turns up for work every single day to get out and vote in this election because positions on issues don't matter unless we use our voice at the ballot box. And so I hope that you and your family members and your coworkers uh, know how important this election is. And I hope that you remember November 6th is our opportunity to make the change that we need to see in this state. Thanks for the work that you do.